Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Bitcoin Trade. In this episode I'll go over uh, a few things here, um, but let me go over some news first. So let's let's address some of the news here that I've seen here. And I'll just go back up here, and uh, we'll address this one because um, on a peer-to-peer -peer market, uh, it is uh, a cause for concern. It says here, major spike in local Bitcoin's trading activity could be due to scams and fraud, and. Um, let me see, here's the article on it. This is just one of the articles that I'm going to kind of talk about here real quick. And uh, if you look at some of these uh, graphs, you'll see that uh, the volume has supposedly increased. And it's, it's been kind of increasing uh, very dramatically uh, since 2000. 13, I got in right around this time right here to what it is now and um, I thought this is very interesting because this is somewhat uh, this could be very true um, when I first started around here around uh, November uh, this is when the price was uh, about 2 250 and you see it steadily has gone up and probably right around 2014 this is kind of where it's uh, went up to a thousand but you see since then it's um, increased and since then a lot of things have happened uh, Mount Gox collapse uh, what else um, Gosh, and more recent things have happened. The stolen hot wallets, uh, stolen compromised hot wallets. So, uh, Bitstamp, Bitfin, uh, somewhere around there, there's uh, an exit scam from a uh, from one of the uh, dark websites. Uh, but yet, you see this kind of trend going on here, going up upwards. In volume, and I'm not talking about just a little bit. It's, it's apparently it's gone up to let's see about four, four or five million um, uh, weekly volume. So that's a lot, um, supposedly. But I don't know how the how they track it because there's a lot of uh, things that go on. Uh, it's very different than like. Uh, an exchange like Bitstamp or Bitfin or even Bitsy or even any Chinese exchange um, unlike regular exchanges it's usually the highest price or the lowest price um, so people who are selling um, they want the highest price and people who are buying they want the lowest price and when those offers kind of meet up, you get a little spread in between. And it's usually whatever the lowest um, offer and the highest bid, I guess, something like that. Anyways, um, when when someone makes that pushes that button to buy bitcoins, uh, they're buying the. Um, the best price at that time but unlike those other exchanges uh, local bitcoins is very different in, in that the fact that you can choose you don't always uh, you don't have to pick the, the lowest price or the highest price or whatever um, you get to choose who you wanna um, you know trade with 
based on their, um, I guess, your rep the reputation, some kind of scoring method, uh, or, or, or their trustworthiness. Um, so you can look at some feedback there. Uh, but I've seen people trade for like a ridiculous amount. Don't know why. Um, four or five hundred per Bitcoin, a thousand Bitcoin. Um, so I think sometimes the the volumes are maybe misleading. Uh, another thing I think is going on is that um, there could be uh, multiple accounts being used. Um, and I, I kind of always felt this, that there's some people who are using uh, local bitcoins to nothing more than just create uh, what I call shill accounts. Basically, they're just they're just being used to pump up the feedback and the trading history. And uh, I've heard they're being sold. Um, so if someone basically builds up the the feedback and the history, and then sells it off, either for someone who who doesn't want to put in the time and, and the effort, um, you know, for to trade. Or, or to basically commit scams and fraud based on a good reputation. So, there's a lot of things that can happen. But um, I don't know how they record this because you know with the the trade, you don't even know if that's a real trade. Some people just trade like a thousand dollars per Bitcoin or a million Bitcoins for a penny, and uh, it's really the same people who are just trading amongst themselves to, to uh, raise their feedback. But apparently there might be some scam going on, uh, if you read the headlines here. Uh, apparently, according to this report, if you scroll down, and it, you know, it's all, any currency across the board, you see local Bitcoins just increasing in um, use. So overall, the trend looks that way. And that's in the last uh, picture they're going to show is uh, apparently there's there's some kind of scam going out in South Africa, and um, so that's something to watch. Uh, that could be the the reason for the rise in in, in the volume. Um, there's something to watch out for. Uh, is it happening? Is it not happening? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. How, I don't have direct proof on that, but uh, I, I do believe that you know, unfortunately, um, local bitcoins has kind of been known for a lot of uh, scammers. Unfortunately, um, getting trading peer to peer has been um, has been a uh, increasing but at the same time um, I guess uh, it also increases um, you know the scammers as well you know wherever there's activity there's always some some parasite coming over trying to trying to feed off of it and so that's kind of what you're seeing um, overall I think uh, local bitcoins has become popular because it's um, been so much easier to trade with uh, other people. It's becoming more easier. Um, and at the same time, it's becoming more difficult. Um, but I think overall, it's obviously it's been an increasing um, venue for, for people to exchange their coins for, uh, for money. Or some form of money, whether it be cash or or other payments. Um, so that's kind of one of the things I do want to address because I do uh, trade in the peer-to-peer -peer market. Um, is there scams going on? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure there are. Uh, wherever um, you got a, you have something of value that. Uh, can be sent instantly, uh, non-returnable, um, you know, uh, 
can be done anonymous, anonymously uh, from anywhere around the world. It, it does draw in s some fraud and scams, um, but uh, if you if you've been trading on a peer-to-peer -peer market, uh, you'll know what to watch out for. Um, you know when to trade, when not to trade, and all that. So, uh, just want to bring that up uh, for anyone who's trading in the peer-to-peer -peer market. Uh, this major spike in, in trading activity is due to fraud. I don't know. Um, can't can't really say because I don't do those things. Uh, but I, what I can say is that. Um, Peer-to-peer -peer activity is, is I think, will always remain strong uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, that on a peer-to-peer -peer level, uh, doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to. You definitely don't have to be licensed. Um, you know the amount in which you trade, um, depending on what the amount is. Uh, again, you don't need a license, you don't need permission. Um, there is some risk. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and I'm going to go over some of those risks because here's another article, and I know we talked about this before. Let me see here. Why isn't that refreshing? Oh, sorry. Alright, so. Here it is. Man, oh. Okay. It's uh, another ar uh, another article about the uh, man who was held at gunpoint for bitcoins comes forward. So um, it's actually uh, a video on YouTube, and they're they're interviewing the person who uh, uh, basically uh, got um, basically uh, held up at gunpoint recently in New York. Right there, let me see here. And, and there's the gentleman right there, and, and, and he talks about his experience. And um, according to the video and what he said, it's it's been going on for a while, and it seems to be the same group or group of people in in the Brooklyn area who are basically kidnapping. So you're basically kidnapping, and then um, I think they call it duress. Uh, Maybe, but basically, people are being held against their will, then forced against their will at gunpoint to send their bitcoins. Um, and if they have any money, they'll take the money too. Uh, but it, apparently, it's been going on, um, you know. And uh, it seems to be scaring away a lot of uh, people who trade. Um, this gentleman refers to, you know, to himself as a pro trader. So I guess he's considered. Uh, to be doing this for for some time, and it seems from what he's saying that people are scared. People are scared. Um, I wouldn't say they're scared of regulation. I would say they're scared of uh, for their lives. You know, and uh, I, I did mention how that you might be killed for your bitcoins, and, and it seems to be coming true. Uh, the greatest fear is, you know, one day the headlines will be, you know, uh, man killed for bitcoins uh, by gunpoint, you know, or something like that. Some kind of headline. It could be a woman, woman killed, you know, whoever, person killed. And, uh, you know, that's. When, when that happens, um, expect crazy things to start happening more than that. It just starts, when it, when it comes, you know, these, these events, when they come, they, they come and they're going to come in very such um, magnitude of waves. You know, you'll see the first wave, and the second wave, and the third wave, and they'll just start coming in huge tidal waves. Um, you know, this isn't over yet. This is probably just the beginning. Of, of how these things are going to manifest into reality. So, anyways, very good YouTube. Uh, kind of insightful. You know, he pauses a little bit. He doesn't want to give out too much information on on exactly how he trades or what he trades or the amount. 
or, or who he's been trading with, and, you know, don't blame him because, you know, they could come after him again now that he, obviously they know who he was, apparently he was uh, interacting with the perpetrators, um, so basically, um, they're going to be a group of people, or a person, they're going to befriend you. They will, you know, lead you away, lead you astray. They'll deceive you. So, I don't know, I mentioned that. And, uh, it's happened. Now, I don't know if it's happened because I, I mentioned that or uh, it's happening because that's, um, for other reasons, but... I don't know, so it's, you know, Bitcoin's a strange world, and when you, you know, enter into the world of Bitcoin, uh, it's hard to know what's real and what's not real, you know, you don't know which, which reality you're in anymore, so it's, it's a good article, it's a good video, um, watch it, and, uh, uh, my personal opinion, just my just my personal opinion. Like I said, this is probably going to continue. Um, and how far is it going to spread? I, I don't know. Um, uh, I do believe that it's going to spread more in in the states that are very restrictive of gun ownership and how you can protect yourself with. Your, with your firearm, how, how you can defend yourself. Uh, the states that are really restrictive on your self-preservation, your right to exist, um, those are uh, the states, at least in America, where, uh, where you will be attacked. Um, you know, the perpetrators will come after you at your home, in your business, in the streets, in the middle of the night while you're sleeping, during the day, when you're with your kids. I mean, there's, they're not going to stop. They're not going to stop until, until you no longer have any bitcoins. And so, um, that's, that's what I think is going to happen. Whether it will happen or not, I, I don't know. Only time will tell. Um, you know, I would just say stay safe and take uh, better precautions. Um, so, anyways, watch watch the video. Get a, get an idea of, of you know what's going out there. And uh, it seems like there's more things going out there than I think people really realize what's going out there. What's going on out there anyway? So, man was held at gunpoint for Bitcoin comes forward. So, and um, so after this, so let's talk a little bit about the news. I'm going to go ahead to the chart analysis now. And here's the uh, chart analysis on a two hour. I want to get into the two hour for, for a reason because uh, this is the low point, this is the drop off, and this is where it kind of made the support around here and around these levels here and um, here's that spike uh, you see it several times you see it on different exchanges a small little spike here and there um, that might have been now I'm looking back in time and I know it doesn't do anybody good considering the prices up up here now so I'm looking at a bit fan on a two hour and you know you'll see the spike you see the spike other places that might have been the first signal or first indicator that the price was going to go up. And then slowly the prices started breaking above this high, hit it again above this high, came back down and again another high. And this is on a two hour. So if we go back here, let me see here, sorry about that, my computer froze on me. Now, now I'm going to go to a 12 hour because I just wanted to show this last portion where it dropped off. And then, then you see that little spike. And then um, several reasons for these little spikes you see up there. Um, 
usually when when I see things like like the, the spikes here um, the spike in price and coming back down uh, those are to knock out all the um, I guess you call them short sellers so knock out the short sellers or or whatever you know they're when I see these spikes they're, they're kind of just I guess they're the whipsawing effect of margin trading is what I would what I would think they that that's what it is and so anyways so uh, everyone got knocked out of their short or their maybe they hit their long and came back down uh, and they're margin trading here but you can see from here obviously it's the first signal on this that's going up it's also crossed over here um, it, it was kind of a little scary because whenever you see a crossover you don't know if it's really going to cross over or, and drop off dramatically but it looks like it continued to go up so as you see the higher highs being done the lower lows um, you see this portion of the price action start to uh, move up and it, overall that's a good sign because um, you know the movement of price it's not going to it's, they're going to come in waves, I guess you could say. They're going to be small, and then they're going to increase in waves, increase in waves, increase. And so, um, you know, uh, I guess it's a good sign. It's a, it's a good indication of uh, an uptrend, an upward movement. And so we'll, we'll see how far it plays out. Um, 250 could be the target. Really, you want to see a break above 250, and then once it does that, it should start going uh, up towards 300 so in another note um, the reason I brought up the news about the, uh, uh, the guy coming forward um, if you watch the video he mentions a lot about how he's taking more precautions extra precautions he doesn't even have bitcoins on him when, or money when he trades he's uh, getting together with a group of people Right. So he's getting together with a group of people. And so what you're going to see now is I guess you could say people are going to start grouping together. Um, several reasons. Um, support. They can support each other emotionally. You know, and maybe to some degree financially. Like you know, join together in, in a common effort um, for protection, for safety. And so you're going to start seeing that. And I think it's going to start happening very quickly because uh, this fear of, and people who trade are really genuinely afraid. They've always been afraid. They've always been afraid. And. Uh, I think that's well, at least for the uh, for the victims who trade Bitcoin. They they they're they're afraid. Um, they're afraid of being victimized. They're afraid of being held up at gunpoint. Um, and so uh, I think you're going to see a wave of things happening where it's going to get harder. It's going to get very very hard to get Bitcoins. Um, it's going to you have to go through a lot of hoops now uh, to get bitcoins uh, because it's not just uh, you know it could cost you your life now of course I've always kind of said that in the future that they may, they may even die for your bitcoins anyways I, I still think that's true um, you know people die for money if Bitcoin's more valuable than money, then people will die for Bitcoins. So, um, that's something to watch out for in the future. Uh, I think it's a great idea that that people band together and and you know create uh, a local group. I think that time is. Um, I think you're going to see that more and more often because there's um, 
you know, there's strength in numbers, there's power in numbers. Um, you don't have to be the most wealthiest, the strongest, or the bravest. Um, but if you're part of a group, and collectively the group as a whole is more stronger than one person, then, uh, you know, you, that's probably what's going to happen. You're going you're to see different areas grouping together to protect themselves. And uh, the way people trade is going to change. How people trade is going to change. Um, and, and trying to trade and get more bitcoins is going to get it's going to get harder. Um, so not only is it you're going to the mining portion of the of of trading bitcoin is going to get harder, but actually trading the actual trading of bitcoin is also going to get harder. And time is going to over time, it's going to just, you're, you're probably going to see it where the threat uh, against uh, perpetrators coming after your Bitcoin uh, is going to increase as well. And so, and what I'm trying to say is because of, you know, things that have happened. Um, getting bitcoins now, it's going to get harder. Um, you know, you have to do a lot more. It's not it's not enough just to be anonymous. I'm, I'm talking about for the people who who buy and sell um, the the pro traders. I guess you can you can call them. Um, you know, there's there's going to be so many things that a person has to do. Just, just to trade now, um, thus, you know, making it more difficult to 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 acquire as well. So, and and that's the reason why I think the price has gone up. Um, I think there's more and more people are probably going to go to an exchange now, uh, probably a regulated exchange. Um, or maybe non-regulated exchange, who knows. Uh, but I think people are going to go to uh, what they perceive as an legitimate, uh, legitimate exchange. And, uh, well, that's how they're going to get their Bitcoins. And they're going to drive the price up higher. Because every time you buy a Bitcoin, you have to, of course, uh, knock out all the sellers here. And that buying, that drive for buying will drive the price up. And um, as far as peer-to-peer, -peer, that'll still continue, but I think it's going to continue in, in a dramatic way where it's going to be, um, people are going to be more cautious. People are going to be selling in groups, <clears throat> not as a single person anymore, or, you know, basically you're going to be joining a, a group of people to, to trade both with each other and with other people, but as, as a group more or less, uh, working as a team, ensuring the safety of your team members and um, the people around you. And uh, a, lot, a lot of vetting, a lot of vetting going on, a lot more background uh, going on, uh, a, lot of, a lot of different things. So, anyway, so let me, let me go on to the I guess I'll do a direct chart analysis here, and um, so over here we've broken out of this triangle, but it's uh, kind of gone down. It's going up a little bit. Uh, then now you're in with another triangle around here, and I'll try to make a line for that so you all can see that. Somewhere right around here, this to to this point here. There you go, and. There you go. Now it's you can probably tell this is the top. Now uh, the question is: Now it's going to break out of this, or is it going to go back down? I don't know. Um, but I, here's the line. It also hits here as well. This is on 12 hours, so you got a new downtrend resistant line. But if you notice, it's it's the downtrend resistant line was very sharp and going down right here. Now you can see it's kind of the angle has 
tilt it a little bit more. And I don't know if you're going to see this or not, um, but typically it doesn't it doesn't like slowly tilt into an upward trend. What it does is it it slowly uh, the re downturn resistance right here uh, slowly turns to the point where it can't it can no longer um, contain uh, you know the price and it, it eventually breaks breaks through here and when it eventually becomes higher than the last high that's the pivot point which it starts its upward trend so don't expect this 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 line to all of a sudden just gradually turn into a um, you know upward uh, resistance it, it usually just disappears and just becomes a all of a sudden shoots up into like little a little V and becomes a um, resistance on an upward trend and then you'll find your support by connecting the bottoms here so you see it's the the resistance sto slowly just you know flattening out or almost dissipating and so the test is going to be right here which has already hit and then it's come down and so we'll see how much effort it needs to break out of here um, if it starts going above then you know that this is gonna break out of this trend out of this resistance here break out of that and then probably continue up more and then bounce pull back just to push back the pyre so um, a couple things are happening um, it's become dangerous to trade bitcoins, at least in New York. Um, I think getting bitcoins is going to be very difficult. Um, that's another thing that's going to happen. Uh, as as regulation starts playing out, you're going to start seeing uh, more and more exchanges. Uh, come online and people are going to be driven to these exchanges for several reasons safety uh, safety and their physical safety as well and the safety of their money so and that's probably what's really going to be driving the, the prices and as far as peer-to-peer -peer market level pricing and then trading I think that's going to still continue it's, it's probably going to be done differently now where it's not so lax it's not so um, casual anymore um, it's going to be taken a little bit serious because you know your life could be on the line so just it's just I don't know if it's almost like if you carrying something of value around all the time with you um, you know you don't you don't know what's gonna happen you don't know who's around the corner it's kind of it's kind of get like that that kind of weird feeling that you're gonna be paranoid all the time and there's a lot of people I think that are just on the edge and they don't have any bitcoins with them or carry with them or or do those things anymore because yeah I think people are afraid that they're gonna you know have a gun pointed to their face wondering if they're gonna if they're gonna live so anyway so that's the quick chart analysis um, just look out for this point right here right here and see if it breaks out if it can go above that line stay above that line if you're looking at you know 240 Target's really 250. 250 is still the target to hit and go above. So it needs to go back to 250 and go above it. And you know, from then on, I mean, it's anything can happen. I really believe that anything can. I mean, it can just go crazy. It can start trending upwards and just keep trending upwards until it reaches. Um, you know, who knows? It could trend all the way up to a thousand. Pull back from there a little bit just to break right through a thousand go up more I mean you never know um, then again it can also 
you know, trend right back down, being a range between 250 and 1,000. I mean, it's, who knows what's going to happen. But, uh, but I, I think that eventually, at some point, it's going to start trending. You'll see an upward trend. It'll start slow again. And then, all of a sudden, just one day, and hopefully a lot of people will be prepared for that day, uh, you'll have a lot of Bitcoins, that it's going to probably um, go on an upward trend again. And who knows where it's going to go this, this time. I'd like to see how far it goes. If it goes to 1,000, that's great. If it goes to 1,000 and beyond, um, I would anticipate that because of um, the nature of you know how Bitcoins are created and how they're used and spent and everything. And, uh, of course, the opposite of the trade is also the nature of fiat currency, how they're used and how they work and how they're being bought and sold and whatever, how they're being used. And, uh, you know, between the two, uh, Bitcoin and U.S. dollar, you know, how they work in nature or how they work in general uh, would dictate basically that uh, the value of Bitcoin will gradually increase over over time. So, anyways, um, of course we all know that. So that concludes my episode. Um, hopefully this was help. Uh, let's take a quick look at the prices here, and you'll see that BitC um, still higher, um, but you'll notice that a lot of the Bitfin. Uh, the Chinese right now has caught up in 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 price 233 233 very close. Uh, Bitstamp is still a little lower. I, I don't know what the reason is for Bitstamp being lower. I'm sure they got enough people who buy and sell, but uh, for whatever reason, their their prices are lower. Don't know why. I'm sure it'll correct because I'll, other times I'll see this, I'll see Bitfin and Bitstamp match up, I'll see Hobu I'll send up. Everything will kind of match up at one point except for Bitsy. Bitsy's always been higher. The question is how long is that going to be there and um, you know how long that's going to continue. So I've been looking at Bitsy and let's go to, to Bitsy real quick because um, you know, if they're kind of for me, I've been looking at it because it's uh, you know they've been higher out of all the exchanges for some time now, and so um, it's worth looking at. And so here's that spike, and um, that could be an indicator of, of how high it might go to 270, 265, somewhere around there. Um, but if you see here, it's actually crossed over as well. And if you go in to a closer view, to an hour, let's just say an hour, you can see that um, the spread, I don't know what to say, the spread on it or, or the body of the candlesticks kind of tell you a, a trend. You can see the body just slowly moving up and you can see the 10 period average just pushing upward and you see it right around here uh, of course then you see this drop so I want to see the body of this on a on a one hour it kind of really it's really helped me out because I've been l watching Bitsy and uh, the other reason is the spread in prices is, is quite a bit as well but at the same time it's um, the price on this exchange is higher and, and, and you know, why? It's always been typically lower, so there's something going on here. And I've been watching the trades here, and there's been, you know, you have a lot of these little, little, you know, um, limit orders here, both for the buy and sell. And once in a while, you start getting. I've noticed a lot more larger orders here on the order desk here, or whatever you call this, and um, or on the order books that. Basically, uh, I haven't seen, uh, or I don't normally see, sometimes 100, sometimes 200. So it's, there appears to be a lot of activity going here where there wasn't uh, before. Now, um, 
you know, so you're getting some some activity, which could be the reason for 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 the drive in price. But why? It's kind of unusual. So um, watch this. Let me see here. I'll say watch uh, Bitsy. Uh, at least the price action and, and the, maybe the chart analysis of of Bitsy charts. Uh, they could be a good indicator of 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 possible price action movement. So, anyways, let's conclude this on a, on a bit thin. So, that concludes this episode. I uh, hope this helped you out. Uh, feel free to like, dislike, leave a comment, even do a video response. Until next time, stay tuned. Bye.